So Ben, I was I was thinking, right? Like, do you remember your dreams? When you dream, do you remember that? So I remember a few of them, but uh, not very many. But I I hear good stories about uh, what's going on in your household. So well, yeah. So I mean, as a dad of, of four, right? right? And um, we randomly okay. So one crazy creepy thing that'll happen sometimes is all we'll hear is just this shriek, right? And then silence. <laughs> and so so we'll go to the baby monitor like, yeah. what's happening? Mm-hmm. And nothing. <laughs> There's nothing. They're like There's they're not stopped. even moving. Yeah. They're not even squirming. You nothing. Can... They're just there. Hmm. Wow. Tish and I look at each other like, what? Yeah, see both my kids when they were younger, yeah, they'd do the night night terror screams. Right. You know, it wasn't very very long, but yeah, we had we had a few instances where you're like, Oh yeah. Oh. They had a bad dream because they are inconsolable, <laughs> you know. Well there's so, times like we're just right right at the edge of falling asleep yeah. and it happens and it gives you chills, right? Oh, yeah. What is happening? So um yeah, so Ben, I'm glad you're you're joining me again. Got um it. gotta be here. And then my brother, Roland. Definitely. Good to see you here with us. Wouldn't miss an opportunity. Uh, heck yes. Um, super, super excited and happy that you're with us um, on this episode two. Um, but yeah, so uh, dreams, right? So I don't remember like any of my dreams really. Yeah. If I do, it's a real big surprise. However, I do hear stories quite often right. about my dreams and, and talking in my sleep. Um, yeah. One of the more recent ones in the last year that, so this is... This is Tesha telling me the story, but apparently. <laughs> no, and Tesha has a long list of these stories. Oh, uh, yeah, there's there's probably more than this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, apparently, in the middle of the night, she gets woken up by me. Fran- I'm frantic, right? And I'm like, Tesha, 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 you got you to gotta get up. You got to get up. You got to get up. We got to evacuate. We have to go. And uh, it isn't just, like, me rolling over and tapping her. Apparently... I'm animated. I'm both hands <laughs> above her. Yeah, up like, by this her ears. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like, this you're... is her. I'm I'm straight up, completely above her, going, Desha, we gotta go, we gotta go, and she's looking up, going, what? No, <laughs> right? She's, what is happening? And she, she goes, she goes, uh, Harry, be quiet. You're just talking in your sleep. Roll over, and I go, well. She's a goner. <laughs> <laughs> you go back to sleep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> By the time she she collects herself and rolls over, I'm already snoring. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I rolled over and got back to sleep. And she's like, she's no, well, she's wide the, awake, oh, yeah. right? Oh, she's yeah. wide awake, going, "What just <laughs> happened?" And so I wake up in the morning to her just giggling. Oh yeah. And I'm looking over like, "What? What are you giggling about?" She's like, "You should have been awake last night." I didn't remember a thing. I don't remember one piece of that. It's too funny. Oh, my goodness. But I remember a story when, when oh, we were man. growing up, right? We shared a room. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't you know. Take would, this one? Yeah, go ahead. I, I, I think it's kind of funny. Since it's my dream to begin it with. It is your oh, dream. You mm-hmm. And so, you remember the dream for the yeah, most part. So, so apparently, so I got to set the, the preface here. We had a bunk bed. I was up top. You were down low. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Pitch black night. All of a sudden, in my dream, I felt like I needed to hold up the ceiling to the house because I thought <laughs> the ceiling was falling down. Right. Right. And the bunk yeah. beds, the bunk beds about, yeah, they're close. you know, like Maybe only a three, foot, higher, foot higher than I am right now to the ceiling. Yeah. Like, yeah. like three, four feet away from the ceiling. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it, like it wasn't super far away. Yeah. He could, he could reach enough, up and yeah. he could touch yeah. the ceiling from yeah. where he was laying. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So. <clears throat> All of a sudden, I have both my feet, both my hands, and I'm bench pressing the ceiling. <laughs> and the weird part about the weird part about it is I had like an out of body experience where I'm like awake in my dream, yeah. like I'm cognizant of what's going yeah. on. Yeah. In my head, I literally think the ceiling's falling down. I am. I wake up so I'm so serious that the ceiling's falling down. He believes me. He's <laughs> he's. I wake up to. The ceiling, the ceiling is coming down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dad, like, Dad. Right. So I'm a teenager. Yeah. Right. I yeah. think I'm I'm only like 16, 15, yeah. 16. So I mean, it's me. So like he's 13, like 13. 14. Yeah. 
And uh, so what'd you guys eat? I just wake up. I have no idea. <laughs> but I woke up in the middle of the night, him screeching, the oh, yeah. ceiling's coming down. And I'm thinking like water leak, you know, oh, yeah. a pipe burst, mm-hmm. something. So I'm I yelled out. You are alert. Dad. You were alert. I, I was awake. Oh, yeah. But I didn't I didn't look. I just heard him screaming. Just assumed, yeah, and that just what he was, went, yeah. In the middle of the night. Did the right? good brother so, thing? Yeah. Dad, Dad, you know, get up here. So well, Dad, I'm just, I'm, Dad, I'm comes roll, Dad comes rolling in on the scene, <laughs> <laughs> flips on the light, and bite or rolling just push it. Oh yeah, and for all like, his words visibly like trembling. Oh pressing. my goodness, it was at that point. I'm like, yep. What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm looking at the ceiling, and even Dad, you'll say, he, he, you he know, genuinely, me. he genuinely was like, okay, look at the ceiling. He's like. No, ceiling's <laughs> fine. He's talking in his sleep. And while I'm still going like this, and he goes, he goes, just just take one hand down. Yeah. And I'm like, I look at Are, are you crazy? Like, my eyes, like, are, are you crazy? Like, do you want us all to, to get die? squished by the ceiling? Do you want ceiling? us to die? <laughs> so, so here yeah. I am. So I take That's one awesome. hand down, and I'm all the other three are like, I'm oh picking up goodness. the slack. He goes, okay, take the other hand down. And all of a sudden, you can just see over my face. Yeah. Just complete, just... Sheepish, oh, mm. yeah, sheepish. I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. My bad. I, literally, I just rolled right, right back to sleep. Time to go to sleep. <laughs> yep. Oh, we woke up in the morning and we we're like, dude, do do we have a story for you? Oh, that was yeah. crazy. I don't. Did you remember that? I, like, what do you? When did you come I, to? For that? I remember the the feeling of pressing the ceiling. Yeah. And then I rem- remember the feeling of, oh, I feel sheepish. This mm-hmm. is <laughs> not the not the truth. But then I was like, oh. Right back to sleep. Right. Nothing else. So, it's crazy. Well, I, uh, d- if Dave were here talking, yeah. he'd have a story for you that, that um, the last life trip that we went on. Yeah, I think I've heard this story, but it's... So good. him and I are yeah. in the same bed, Detail. right? Detail. And um, <clears throat> as he tells it, he gets woken up by me. And I just want to talk to him about the great traffic we had. <laughs> you know, we drove from here to Minnesota and then flew yeah, down yeah. and yeah. just... It was smooth. Clicked. It, it was. was. It was great. And then, you know, as... When you're putting together a whole trip and, you know, 25 people. and You obviously were processing right, that you got night. multiple yeah. vehicles, right? And you got 25 people you're trying to get on one plane, all the luggage, right? I mean, it's just, it's a lot. And so I was, I was, I remember, you know, getting to the hotel finally down in Florida and just going, ah, man, that was smooth, right? No hitch. No one lost yeah. anything. We didn't lose a kid. <laughs> right? <laughs> More important thing. Woo! Like, we were yeah. good. So I remember going to sleep feeling just real satisfied, real happy. But apparently, I was really happy. <laughs> and I woke up in the middle of the night and tapped Dave on the shoulder, just started jabbing about how great the trip was. And at first, Dave was, you know, Thinking you okay, were that's kind of a random bed. time, yeah. and yeah. then he realized I'm completely <laughs> out. And so the same thing, it's like he tells, he says it's like four in the morning, and now <laughs> I talk to him, I roll over, and I keep sleeping. Now he's like, great, I'm <laughs> <fine."> <laughs> he didn't even go back to sleep. You know, I felt pattern. so bad for him. <laughs> oh my goodness, he was like, uh, yeah, okay, I guess I'm getting up. So moral of the story. Don't sleep in the same room as me. Yeah, exactly. Uh, because, Not if you want to uh, stay awake. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, well, as we always do, we want to uh, talk about maybe some different current events that are going on. Sure. And ben, you had you had a thought and idea, so I'm going to let you roll with that. Well, you know, if anybody that's been paying attention to some of the craziness that's going on <clears throat> in our political system, there's a lot of targets we could yeah. talk about. But the thing that, that uh, we've gotten some good information on is uh, a piece of legislation that's passed the House called the Equality mm-hmm. Act. And I uh, just want to talk a little bit about what that is. And we've got some great resources, and I think um, Spencer should be able to bring these up. So the first one I, I do want to look at is the, the one from the CMA uh, website that talks about uh, uh, Christian Missionary Alliance's perspective on some of this. And I'm not going to read this whole thing. It's a good, it's a good write-up on uh, why the Alliance cares about the Equality Act. Um, <laughs> it's got a lot, of, uh, a lot of details in here, but it, I'm just going to scroll down to the, the paragraph there, Spencer, that's got the Equality Act in bold. And I just want to read that real quick, just get a good summary of what, uh, yeah, it's not a great summary, but it's a big act, but uh, this will this will give you a flavor of what it's about. So the Equality Act is a sweeping piece of legislation mm-hmm. that would amend the Civil Rights Act of 1964, as well as other federal laws to include sexual orientation and gender identity as a protected class. So they're adding that along with race, color, religion, sex, disability, and national origin. So specifically, the act would prohibit discrimination in employment, housing, public accommodations, 
public education, federal funding, credit, and the jury system. The Equality Act would significantly expand on recent United States Supreme Court cases that redefined sex in federal legislation to include sexual orientation and gender identity, not just biological sex. Mm -hmm. So um, that's a real sh you know, short snippet of, of some of the base thoughts of what's going on there. Um, so for those of us that have a traditional uh, Judeo-Christian perspective on sex and gender identity and those kind of things, um, we are potentially going to be put in a place where we cannot exercise those uh, perspectives in the public, or especially mm -hmm. if you are in a position of a church or any other kind of public entity that's responsible yeah. for uh, public events, um, being able to enforce that. And, and uh, there's a lot to talk about here, more than we're going to want to cover today yeah. in this, but I do want to just mention there's some good resources out there. Obviously, they can go to um, this website for the the, of the Alliance. So yep. That's yeah, cm, cmalliance.org mm -hmm. is where you can find the, uh, the article that Spencer showed you there. Yeah, and there's a link um, right on the front page, so that's easy to find. Yeah. Um, the other resource that uh, I, I stole a slide off of this uh, this other website. I'm just going to tell you the website location. Spencer doesn't have that, but this is called childparentrights.org, mm -hmm. childparentrights.org. And they've got a good set of resources there as well uh, regarding what's going on in here. And I just wanted to grab the one, uh, slide. They have a PowerPoint presentation that's got a bunch of information there. And one slide just specifically talks about, um, the potential impact of the Equality Act on mm -hmm. parental rights. Okay. Yeah. Which, uh, a lot of times we're going to be talking about in this uh, <clears throat> podcast. So a couple of bullet points I want to cover on this uh, particular slide. Um, under this act, the parental values of modesty, privacy, and safety would be contradicted by school officials mm -hmm. who require that children accept opposite-sex classmates in their restroom, locker room, uh, and or shower. So a lot of people just think, oh, yeah, yeah that's, that's like senior, senior high, junior high. No, we're talking all the way down to kindergarten mm -hmm. level. Yeah. All right. So even before a lot of parents are having conversations with them about some of the, the things going on in our society, uh, the school's going to be confronting these children with this dynamic right yeah. away, right? So uh, some things to be concerned about that way. Obviously, uh, access uh, not just, you know, other children in those mm -hmm. those restrooms and <laughs> locker rooms and such, but adults as well, right? So some concern about that. Children would be required to affirm that their female classmates are actually male and vice versa, contradicting mm -hmm. their parents' instruction concerning the binary nature of mm -hmm. sex, okay? So once again, um, and I'll read this last bullet point here. Likely, uh, this would lead to universal instruction about sexual orientation and gender identity as normative, contradicting parents' teaching about the created nature of men and women and human sexuality. Okay, yeah. so there's a lot packed in there. Um, the short of it is, and if, you're, if you've been involved at all in mm -hmm. living life and engaged in our society over the last you know, several decades, mm -hmm. there's a whole bunch of things that we as mm -hmm. parents have to uh, be cognizant of, aware yep. of, and be ready to... Uh, shore up our instruction to our children, right? So the teachers in the school should not be the primary teachers of our children. Yeah. And we're going to talk about leadership in a little bit, but we should be, as parents, the primary teachers and uh, caretakers of, yeah. of their development. And uh, there's well, more and more of these items that come up in society yeah. that are flat out contradicting uh, what we as parents want to see. And um, I am concerned about this as a parent. Yeah. And uh, so there's two ways to deal with that. Obviously, you can you can fight on the one front of uh, you know um, talking to your your legislated uh, legislators, um, those that are, have been elected in leadership. Uh, you have certainly the right to call them up, right. express your concerns, uh, send them emails, letters, whatever, uh, whatever your perspective is on it. Communicate to them. That's one way. Obviously, we can pray as Christians that mm -hmm. uh, God's will will be done in, in these situations. That that uh, these kind of uh, encroachments on the way we want to live would, yeah. would be held back. Uh, but thirdly, we need to make sure that we're actively taking care of instructing our children because the world is going to continue to get darker. Yeah, They need to be able to be knowledgeable enough to be able to navigate that appropriately. Well, and, and the important uh, thing, too, in our in our society, it, it is growing more and more where if you disagree about something, then that says that um, you can't have some you know, so a positive relationship or like I... Right. Our society says right now in a lot of ways, it, right, the cancel culture and things like that, if you disagree, um, right, relationship over. And when in reality, um, 
that that that's going to create just this huge divide that already is there and it's going to create a, a deeper one you know as i look about as you say you know instructing your kids all people no matter who they are yep. or what they choose to be and things like that deserve love they deserve respect they deserve compassion right regardless of their choices i don't care who you are or what you've done the worst of the worst the best of the best you know it that doesn't exist you are a human being you um as especially as Christians, we are called to love, um, and that means especially in the midst of disagreement, right? In the midst of yep. not seeing eye to eye to some, in the midst of you know, as you're saying, this Equality Act in some ways could lead you know a snowball effect to you know different um, rights of churches and and what what we believe the Bible teaches and things like that being oppressed and taken away. And even in the face of that, we're still called to love and respect and, and things like that. But how how do you love and respect somebody when you disagree with them? Right. And the easy the easy out that I'm seeing happen a lot is, well, they just don't be friends with them, or mm-hmm. or you know, just don't have a relationship with them, or just cut them out. Right. And it, that that creates a bigger divide. Wonder Rather you. than good discussion, where you might still disagree at the end of that discussion, but at least you've been able to hear out that person's heart. And quite often, what I found when someone disagrees with me vehemently, like something really, really tough, if I give them an opportunity to speak and I hear them out and I try to understand where they're coming from, I still have a relationship with them. If I cut them off or I push them away or, um, or, just immediately dismiss what they're saying, right? Even though I might not agree with it, even though I might not believe what they're saying is good or right or true, if I just immediately dismiss it instead of hearing that person out, because reality is when someone's talking, the words they're saying is only a piece of what they're actually saying, right? There's a lot wrapped up in in most times, especially when it comes to these type of subjects um, of gender or homosexuality or anything like that, right? There's a lot wrapped up into just one one sentence, sometimes just one word that you have to be willing to be patient and listen and hear. And then you would hope the person across from you would have the same same attitude, same same thought process. And um, man, it's increasingly difficult to, to do those things. One of my friends, uh, Richard Ng, just did a, a podcast episode about can you have profitable debates on Facebook? Right when I say that immediately, yeah. we're all like, "Ooh, I don't think so." Right? Yeah. It was a great, great episode. I encourage you to go, go check it out. Um, but uh, go, go look at Richard Ng's Facebook page on um, Facebook. But uh, it is, it's an increasingly hard thing to have. Like, what venue is there really that that facilitates good discussion? Unless, right, the two parties are willing to go. I love you. The reason why I love you is because you were created by God. Whether you decide to to follow him and recognize that or not, I will love you. I will choose to love you. I I might disagree with you, right? Um, and I think that's the hard for me when I'm looking at um, instructing kids, my kids, of what this could mean for their future life is holding strong to what you believe and loving people it will it will be increasingly difficult to do those things it already was difficult and as we read through the bible it always has been difficult yeah. Yeah. there's really nothing new and the this context thing. in which this is happening here is growing increasingly difficult mm-hmm. and um i think that will ebb and flow it as time goes on but it is it's it's uh i'm glad that you brought this up it's something that parents need to invest some time in to understand what it is as we all know media is not very reliable at times and so to go do your own research and understand what does this act look like i'm sure it's got pages upon pages mm-hmm. you know inside it of what all it will include but well and the other thing and, and just to bounce off of some of what you're saying and we have to realize that we are in a spiritual battle and our enemy mm-hmm. is not these individuals that are struggling no. with some of these things or right. even the, the activists that are pushing this perspective. Right. Um, well, there we, is all, a, we all sin. We all fall, exactly, fall short yeah. of the glory of God, right? Like, Absolutely. So, we, you know, as a, as a, as a born-again Christian, the idea is to be loving on people as Christ mm-hmm. would. And, uh, and that, that means doesn't mean valuing them as individuals, right? But not exactly. necessarily their, their choice of lifestyle That's or their choice of, of, uh, of how they are mm-hmm. uh, thinking about, yeah. um, you know, reality around them. And yeah. so um, where, where it gets 
I think the most difficult is when they are pushing you into a position where you can't say anything or they're mm-hmm. going to start taking away things from you yeah. and taking away mm-hmm. rights. And that's unfortunately where parts of our society yeah. are going. And so, uh, at what the individual level, your yeah. position, your, your position, your, uh, how are you going to approach those subjects? Yep. How are you going to carry yourself? Are you in, like intentionally that? not going to bring up something that, that might, you know, lead to a interesting and maybe mm-hmm. unproductive, well, as, as you said, talk here in the next know, part, Facebook rant. So pride rarely yeah. helps you out, right? Yep. Coming mm-hmm. with humility is, is but a it's huge not going to help if we're, engaging the battlefield with a chip on our shoulder judgment bitterness. in our ju- yeah. judgment and bitterness towards those that are that are mm-hmm. you know on our intellectual right uh, or to or to say because you made this choice now your entire existence is right. defined by that choice as well yeah exactly that, that's mm-hmm. that's ludicrous in the same yeah. way that you know if i stumble and i commit a sin now my life is defined by that sin no of course yeah. not that's the um, trap, and that's what the enemy wants to push, and right. that's the perspective that he wants to have the church portrayed under is as one of judgmentalism and mm. strict, yeah. you know, harsh rejection of people. No matter yeah. if they're not just like yeah. us, then we're to reject them, and that's obviously not the gospel. It's obviously yeah. not where wow. we are. Yeah, you know, we we enjoy the the benefits. Uh, Few that they may be of living in Sydney, Montana. <laughs> a bit of a where, bit where of a fantastic you live, yeah, town. Yeah, you're living in a different yeah. state. You know, well, yeah. we were just Roland and I were golfing earlier today, and yeah. you know, you don't gotta wear a mask. Just it's a little bit different. He's like, "What is this?" A couple states over, but it seems like a different country. Yeah, almost. yeah. Don't right. tell him that the wind was going from here to there. We're going to COVID <laughs> in their way. So yeah, yeah. So I was gonna add one more thing to the conversation. Mm-hmm. You know, I have a couple kids, very young. Yep. Still a few years out from getting to this. Uh, into the school age. But when I when I hear these kind of conversations, I feel like sometimes, like just with the Equality Act in general, sometimes when I hear it, I'm going, man, how much more do I need to be in the Word of God? Exactly. Do I need to focus on those mm-hmm. granular pieces of our yeah. walk of faith yeah. that I need to instill in my kids? Mm-hmm. You know, totally. it's like, if I'm not if I'm not getting the word of God myself, how can I be prepared? Right. In order to get them educated and filled with the word of God themselves. Yeah. yeah. So you're right. It starts at home. It starts. Yeah. It starts with us. Yeah. Honestly. And our it walks does. with God. 100. percent You so. you cannot you cannot truly love somebody unless you yourself understand and are in the love of Christ, right? And letting that flow through you and flow out of you. Um, exactly. You know, there's definitely different times. We all have that difficult people in our life. Where I take a moment and go, God, help me love them. Like my who I am, my flesh, I, it's really struggling. I'm annoyed with them or frustrated with them. or mm-hmm. They've let me down this many different times. Help me to love them, right? Help me to see the person that they are, like inside. And ignore sometimes the actions going on for the moment. To just be able to love them the way that, that I should, right? Jesus preached, love your enemies, right? Um that's a really unpopular thing uh, right now. Yeah. To love your why would you lo- why would you waste the time? But right? see, that's the challenge. It's like, but love is what changes right. everything. Yeah. Nobody's been won to the kingdom by being argument, you know, yeah. argued into the kingdom right. or judged into the kingdom. I won the argument, so now you're gonna now, you're gonna yeah. surrender your life to right. God. Yeah, yeah, no, it doesn't happen. More. Never. Yeah. Happen. <laughs> so, but whose job is that to bring conviction? Mm. Ah, it's the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. So we can be in prayer for all these people that are yeah. that are. Uh, under delusion, under, you know, that twisting of, of the mm-hmm. truth and reality, mm-hmm. we can be in a position of uh, partnering with God, say, yeah. you know, get out there and, and uh, do the work of the kingdom in the spiritual realm so that uh, hopefully these people are, are seeing the truth at some point. And if we're loving them at the same time, um, you know, I, I think that's a, a way better strategy than standing on a soul box and, and rightfully so, speaking truth, but doing it in a very judgmental way. So, right. Yeah. To be a light is one thing. To be um, obnoxious is another, right? Um, yeah, great. I'm glad that I'm glad that you brought that up, Ben. Thank you um, for bringing our current event uh, of, of the day, and uh, it leads actually really well into our next subject. Um, in talking with Roland when he was coming out, I'm like, man, I really like to do an episode with you on oh, yeah. on this podcast, right? Uh, we only did episode one. This is episode two um, yep. of the new season, onward and upward, and so. Yeah, so we talked about what onward and upward meant last time, and so this time we're looking, and this is something that's kind of been through my brain, I kind of threw it out, rolling, rolling, it's like, yes, that is awesome. <laughs> um, and it's yeah. in the subject of, to what structure do you raise your kids, right? And this, it doesn't necessarily pertain to, you know, um, single child households, right? We're talking 
households of two, three, four, typically more of the three, four, five, six, where you kind of have a group of kids, yep. right? Yep. Um, which naturally, that's where my mind goes. I've got four kids. I do have a fifth on the way. So I'm looking at, you know, how do I raise these kids, my children, my, my sons, and whatever the, the fifth, the son or daughter, right? Yeah. Um, how do I raise them to not simply be great individuals, but just as we were talking before, to, to coexist with others really well, to have unity, right? I, we, we read in Scripture all over the place. You know, I brought up uh, 1 Corinthians 12 in our last episode. Um, we aren't going to dive into that a whole ton today, but that's a great piece of Scripture to go to, um, yeah. to, go to as well for, for unity in the body and things like that. And, um, and so this, this idea, you know, jumped in my head as I'm, as I'm reading through Psalm 78, Deuteronomy 6, and all these awesome pieces of Scripture— what if I raise my kids as a leadership team? Now, you know it's huge on my heart of, of raising up leadership teams, not a leader. A leader is great, but a leader that's solo by themselves will typically st stumble, fall, and fail. If there's not accountability, if there's not unity, if there's not a group moving, it's really tough, right? Um, uh, a leader's only, if a leader leads by themselves, is only successful to their capacity. That's okay. that's one of the sayings that I've that I've been told by a mentor in the past, right? And what that means is, if you're doing it by yourself, there's a limit to that, mm -hmm. and we we have a human limit to the to our ability. Um, we have a limit to our time. You only get 24 hours a day. No one gets an extra second or an extra minute or even an extra hour, right? <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice? All of a sudden, like today, you know, I could really use 28 hours, <laughs> an extra three hours of sleep. We're good. Yeah. Right? It doesn't, it doesn't yeah. work that way. When that 24 hours is up, it's up, and it's the next day. Um, so how do you make best use of that time? And This idea of children are a leadership team. Um, and I started unrolling that and, and going, what, what would that look like? What would that mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, right, this isn't just like yesterday I thought of this. This has been over the last couple of years that I've been really thinking this through and going, man, this is something interesting. So I've been... Uh, experimenting, if you will, right? Of like, what would it look like if... Your poor kids. I know, right? <laughs> well, let's be honest. This, I was talking with Roland. I think I was talking to you too. Is it yeah. raising kids in a lot oh, of ways? It's, just it's, one big it's experiment. It's like the practice of medicine. Though. Right. Yeah. It's, it's like, all... oh, that didn't work. We're not going to do that yeah. again. You know, uh, yeah. you know yeah. the, way you, the way you discipline, the way you motivate, the way, uh, you know, it's, it's all going, I want to love you, I want to respect you, I want you to grow up in the right way. But there's a lot of different opinions and views and things like that. And this is one that I'm like, okay, what, you know, what would it look like if my kids were a leadership team where, mm -hmm. where Harry, just because he old, he's the oldest, he isn't the alpha and yeah. just leading the charge. And now all of you need to follow him. Right. Right. And so I talk with him sometimes because it's natural to be the oldest. Yeah. Yep. You've been around longer. You think you know yep. more, all that stuff. It's, yeah. it's a natural thing that happens. But just because it's a natural thing that happens, does that make it right? Or, or better yet, just because it's good, is that the best? Yeah. Right? And so I've been talking with Harry of going, what gives you right or authority to tell your brother Oscar to pick up his dishes? To just pick up your dishes. Mm -hmm. And quite often, as you know, <laughs> his dishes probably aren't picked up That's themselves, right? Oh, right? Yeah. Harry's dishes are still sitting there, and he's going, Oscar, put yeah. your dishes in the sink. Yeah. And I, you know, so... And while you're at it, grab mine, too. Yeah, yeah right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, hey, you forgot mine. Yeah, right. And so I'm drawn to Psalm 78. It's kind of the... It's, it's always been my motivation behind why I do what I do as a pastor, um, and then also as a father, right? So Psalm 78... Right. It says, "All oh, my people, listen to my instructions. Open your ears to what I am saying, for I will speak to you in a parable. I will teach you hidden lessons from our past, stories we have heard and known, stories our ancestors handed down to us." Right? Meaning, he's going to share. He's going to share. He's going to share, and it's not always going to make sense right away. It's going to be sometimes confusing because you have limited understanding right now, right? Limited experiment experience. We will not, I love that, we will not hide these truths from our children. We will tell the next generation about the glorious deeds of the Lord, about his power and his mighty wonders. For he issued his laws to Jacob. He gave his instructions to Israel. He commanded our ancestors to teach them to their children so the next generation might know them, even the children not yet born. 
and they in turn will teach their own children. So each generation should set its hope anew on God, not forgetting his glorious miracles and obeying his commands. Then they will not be their ancestors, stubborn, rebellious, and unfaithful, refusing to give their hearts to God. Right? Like, man, if I could... (laughs) If I could, as a parent, live up to that piece of scripture right there, I'd be, I'd be so happy. <laughs> I just, I'd be speechless. I, I know I'm gonna fail, and already have failed at, at different times, right? But like Psalm 78 is just always that place where I go. That is such a great, a great place to start. Of, I'm not raising these kids. We said in the first first episode, mm-hmm. what goal do you have in raising your kids? What goal do you have in doing what you do every single day? Why do you do that? Mm-hmm. Why follow God? What what is the what is the end goal? Right? We brought up you know um, finishing the race well, right? Um, and just this idea of to what end are you doing these things? And Psalm seventy eight for me is that end. Like that's why I'm parenting. That's why I'm, my wife and I decided to have kids because we want to raise up a generation that does doesn't just know but takes that knowledge and puts it into action right we talked about that before too knowledge without action is just dust in the hand right it's mm-hmm. worthless it's just sitting right. there doing nothing rotting um putting knowledge into practice right psalm 78 generation to generation to generation you know i don't know if dad ever said this to you he said it to me when i had my first kid just do a little better than me right just do a little <laughs> better than me i tried to do my best do a little better than me. And as you do that and your kids do a little better than dad, right? Mm-hmm. And do a little bit better, do a little bit better and continue to raise your kids in this, in this way is huge. So that's right. My motivation. And I think, um, you know, I want to try to walk in that, but then also bringing in this idea then of a leadership team, right? I go to Ephesians four and I look at, at mm-hmm. unity, right? Right. Um, and just the different things there. If you go to Ephesians 4, right, it starts right away. Therefore, I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God. And then here you go. This is how you have unity. Ready? Always be humble. And it doesn't say try to be humble. And it doesn't say <laughs> for the most part, right? If you want to have good unity, always be humble and gentle. Just stop right there. Humble and gentle. What would it look like if I lived a life that was humble and gentle? Now, that's a hard one for me because I'm a pretty blunt person quite often. (laughs) Um, You're on worship teams with me and stuff like that. And if I'm like, nope, don't play, I'm like, don't play, right? Or, hey, come in. And I try to to stop it. But you're you're gentle. Okay. Most of the time. (laughs) (laughs) I try try to be aware of it, and I try try to, you know. Mm -hmm. But I think the other thing you got to remember is um, our society does a really poor job of explaining what humble means. Mm. You know, humble is just simply living your life in the correct understanding as God sees you. Yeah. Right. So if you got yeah. certain strengths it's and talents, it's not saying I'm bad at something. No, Thank and you. it's not. It's mm-hmm. not intentionally stepping back from a leadership role. Mm-hmm. If you're the position that, that should be yeah. stepping in and being mm-hmm. a leader, that's that's being humble. Definitely. Right. Now that's. Obviously, there's a fine line. You, you go, you go too far, and you become arrogant, yeah, and all of a yeah. sudden, it, being, it goes beyond you. Yeah. Well, then you are no longer in agreement with what God says about you. So at that point, you're no longer being humble. So right, it's all. It's it's a super important part of a leadership team, right? And I I was gonna ask you this. And we can maybe talk about it uh, once you get through a few more things here, but I think one of the best ways. In the case for you guys, or all of us, you know, whether to have children, if 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 you and and Tesha are exemplifying what it looks like to be a leadership team in your mm-hmm. family, yeah, that's going to bleed out. Yeah, exactly. Right. Mm-hmm. Like you're working together as a team. Mm-hmm. Uh, those boys are going to pick it up. Definitely. Yeah. Well, and, and that's part of our discussion. Before I move on, is to have unity. These things need to be taking place. If they don't take place, you can't have unity. Which, as I'm reading this, I'm very closely related to a healthy team and an mm-hmm. unhealthy team. An el- unhealthy team, it's going to have a lot of pride. It's going to have a lot of selfishness. It's going to have a lot of bitter- bitterness. It's going to have a lot of anger. It's going to have Infighting. envy and all these mm-hmm. things. Uh, you know, a healthy team requires humility. 
A healthy team requires gentleness. And it goes on. A healthy team requires patience. A healthy team, and I love this, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Mm -hmm. How often do we do that? My wife is phenomenal at it. I don't know how she does it or puts up with me sometimes. And I've told her that. I, your ability to, to look past someone's faults mm -hmm. astounds right. me. Yeah, it's a super... And it's not that skill. I'm sitting here just judging everybody. Yeah. But no. I'm just talking, man, when I screw up and she's some... A lot of times... I'm she like, could pile well, on. How do you forgive me? Just, yeah. Like, and, it, and it's not a... Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah you're, you're fine. It's not that. I'm like genuine forgiveness where she doesn't bring it up again. Mm -hmm. She doesn't, you know, sulk on it. It doesn't create bitterness. It's done and it's it's gone. I'm like, how do you, you know, mm -hmm. or I'll, you know, I'll be driving and this person cut me out or just irritated and she goes, <laughs> it's fine. No big yeah. deal. Yeah. I'm like, how are you that person all the time? I wish I could dip into that well a little bit, yeah. you know, like. Definitely. My wife always says something along the lines of, well, maybe they had X going on or oh, they had, get, tries to get yeah. to their yes. side. Yes, yes. And give my perspective a fuller understanding. Yeah, totally. Which is, and that's what out. she's doing, right? In that moment, she's making allowance for someone else's faults because of their love for that person. Mm -hmm. So it goes on make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. Okay, so now I'm taking this, this leadership idea mm -hmm. and going, Outside of a strong team are all these bad things I, I don't want my kids to live for. Selfishness, pride, bitterness, envy, anger, frustration, annoyance. Just live in that space, right? Who wants their kids to live in that space? No one. We, you know, if I, if I could sit there and go, someone told me, um, your kids, wouldn't you love it if they could live in harmony with people, that they live with patience, that they would make allowance for your faults as a parent, right. that they would love you, that they would love each other. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah, Immediately, I, I'll do whatever. I'll do whatever it takes mm -hmm. if, if that can be the outcome. And it's getting me thinking, I wonder, would this not lead to that? If I lead my kids in a leadership team where, where they work together, they take ownership of this team as my my kids where you know their brother stumbles and falls and they take it on like it's part of my responsibility to help a fallen team member mm -hmm. right a fallen brother yeah exactly or sister mm -hmm. and go i'm going to help them up and then as a parent to be the head of that team to to train that team to you know what I'm saying? To me, at least, it like totally changes my outlook of of, of raising kids. Mm -hmm. That I'm not just raising individuals, right? Yeah. And I'm like, now I gotta, you know, I'm gonna try to. And they're all unique, but as a team, if they're healthy as a team, and I'm raising a healthy team with my wife, they're gonna recognize the the uniqueness. Right, just as in our leadership teams here at the church, yep. you're better at this than I am, or mm -hmm. or I'm better at this than you are, and and it's not a pride thing; it's a let's do this together thing. It's Humility humbly, thing. right? Yep, yeah, humbly yeah. recognizing everybody's strengths and talents and their weaknesses, yeah, yep. and making allowance for it. <clears throat> so, the other the other aspect of this is, I think, if as as you are building a, a leadership team in the sense of uh, your children, mm -hmm. one of the natural consequences of that is you're going to end up with a team of leaders. Right. Now, what I mean by that is that they are, are going to get a taste of what leadership looks like in a healthy way. And so when they are apart from the family and they're in their job or their schooling situation or yeah. their sports team or, you know, speech and drama, whatever that, that additional uh, aspect of their life is where they're working with other people, they'll understand that dynamic of what totally. it looks like to be in a healthy team and they can yeah. bring that uh, to it. And I, I think they also, you know, it, it, there's always a learning process in this whole yeah. thing. So teaching skills of how to work through conflict yeah. in the midst of a team is super important. Yeah. And uh, so you're on the early end. I'm on the early yep. end. You're right in the middle. Right? Yeah. So my eighth grader and a fourth grader. Right. And, and that's my challenge. Right. So as I've, I've got a little bit of spread between right. my kids, mm -hmm. you guys, your guys' kids are a lot uh, closer together. Well, and, and yeah, we talked ahead of time. Yeah. We have ignorance to raising kids. And I've talked to 
Paul yeah, and well, you yeah. about that yeah, word exactly. ignorance gets such a bad connotation. Yeah. It's it's actually not you a bad don't know word. What you it's don't just know. saying you have a lack of understanding. Yeah. If you and, didn't if you didn't say you had ignorance, a little bit of pride. Right. Yeah, 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 <laughs> like, yeah. I'm, uh, I'd so, be the first one to tell you. Right. That. We're on this other end of going, okay, all right, my oldest is four. He'll be five in June. Um, where can we go from here? Mm-hmm. And how can I have an 18-year-old that exhibits these things to the best of our ability? And for for you, you're kind of in the middle of that, right? right. But there's others like my father or, or Dave or Paul and several others that we know, men, women, that have raised their kids and they're out of the home and they're on the other end. So um, this is just part one. I'm hoping right. to do a part two of this same subject and talk mm-hmm. with those 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 parents and go, you know, I'm looking forward to that conversation with them of, what do you think about this? Did you raise your kids with this idea? What what do you think would have happened if you had? Or, or uh, you know, can you still affect them now in that way? You know, we talked about that. You know, parents a lot of times will discount their their impact on, on their kids, even at, you know, 25, 30, 40 years old. Mm-hmm. One word. A parent can say one word and completely change, you know, their kid's yeah. attitude. Yeah. Um, or... or or a decision or anything like that. You know, parents have such a, a huge, huge, I think it's, uh, uh, help me roll, it's like Matthew 18 or something that it talks about if you lead one of my children astray, it's better that you would have a millstone, a millstone wrapped around your yep. ankle and drop to the depths of the sea, right? Do not lead a kid astray, please. Yeah. Why? Because they don't have the experience you do. They don't have the knowledge that you should. You, they're going to follow you. That, that's the natural thing that's going to happen. And so it's such a huge weight. Not like heavy like I'm, I'm suffering under it, but just the mantle of leading kids, mm-hmm. leading my children is so huge. I spend a lot of time thinking on it. And so, yeah, I don't know. I'm curious what your thought is on this. Yeah. And, you now, know, go you, ahead, go ahead. you've got a boy and a girl? Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I have both of the sexes. Yeah. So... The way I talk to my boy is way different than yeah. how I talk to my girl. It's 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 amazing to me, and the biggest thing that I can see from it is their reaction, mm-hmm. right? If I try and talk to my son the same way I talk to my daughter, the the reactions are completely different. Yep. Let's say, you know, they they did something wrong that they mm-hmm. knew they'd overstepped the bounds you know Mm -hmm. with my son i'd probably be a little bit more stern like Mm -hmm. yeah you knew the line you crossed it yeah Yeah. with my daughter i need to i've learned i need to have a a gentility about the way i come Mm -hmm. at her Mm -hmm. or she won't receive what you're saying yes yes because i need to hold her in a light of i want to love you i want to i want to well how she sees love is different than yes i want to james i want to be the man that I hope one day would love you back, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? And if I'm being harsh with her, that's what she's going to expect in the future. Mm-hmm. Right. I don't want to be harsh. I want to be right. loving. Mm-hmm. I want to be kind. I want to be gentle. Mm-hmm. And I want to lovingly correct her in the way she should mm-hmm. go. Mm-hmm. And in the realm of this, specifically regarding my kids with this idea of leadership with the kids, mm-hmm. twofold. Number one, I think of when you when you talk about that, I think of kind of passing the leadership torch around the kids mm. in some way shape or form I, I am not because they're not all going to be again but perfect at all these different areas yeah. they're all going to have their strengths yeah exactly mm-hmm. and then the second part of it is going up to that higher level again mm. meaning how my wife and I interact mm-hmm. really mm-hmm. focusing on that and, and at the bottom of it all is looking at our hearts yeah what position are our hearts in to be able to lead yeah. Right. If, if your heart is in the wrong place and you're trying to get something out of leadership, you're enjoying the power. You're enjoying what? It, like, where's your heart at? Yeah, self-serving. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So there's a couple of the thoughts that I have going around in mind. Totally. Mind. Yeah, I thought about that too. Right. If I, if I'm harsh with with Tesha, then my boys are going to be harsh with Tesha. If I'm gentle, soft with Tesha, mm-hmm. uh, as, in the same way for her, if she's if she's harsh with me or giving me attitude, the boys will think that it's it's right. It's that's what you're supposed yeah. to do, and right. and rightfully so, because they're watching and learning and taking in what is presented to them. And uh, yeah, and how cool will that be? And and you brought it up too, Ben. Of I tell our youth all the time, you you can be a leader, mm-hmm. but somehow our world has told them that unless you're the 
the extroverted type that has crafty speech and can speak great in front of crowds, you can't be a leader. And it's just absolutely wrong. I've watched some of the people I, I respect the most are the ones that walk quietly and humbly, mm -hmm. that, that aren't the ones with crafty speech, are the ones typically that are going, this isn't going to come out right, but, and then they say it, right? Um, one person that comes to mind is Terry Young. I mm -hmm. always, when he spoke, I hung on his words. Why? He didn't speak very often, but when he did, you put down what you're doing, whether it's thinking up here or doing something with your hands or whatever, you stop and listen to what he has to say. Because if he's saying something, it is of great importance, right? I think of my older brother, Michael, it's the same thing. He's not going to give you, you know, a thousand mm -hmm. words mm -hmm. and then you, you're, you pick through kind of like, that's who I am, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you 10,000 words and you, I'm expecting you to pick out what right. is important to you. And, In some um, ways, and you think out, out loud. Yeah, I process out yeah. loud. Yeah. You know, and Michael, Terry, and, and others, right? That they've thought about give it you before. Words, they get, yeah. man. This is important. Yep. And um, it's worth worth listening to. I hope people think I'm worth listening to too. But it's a different. <laughs> it's a different nature, right? Yeah. And, and what, what comes to mind when you when you speak on that is, as you being a leader, mm. being a leader doesn't always mean dominating conversation and being right. open. Sometimes. Being the, thank you. Yes. Yeah, sometimes being a leader means, get it off of me. Let's hear from you guys. Yep. It, it's it's having that unity that you talked totally. about in Ephesians four, being able to understand like different perspectives. Yep. Let's add. Let's let's put things together in order to create the best leadership team. I've long told Ben one of the hardest things for me, um, like with our worship ministry, is when we came going. All right, what is our mission and vision? What are our core values? And the first thing is, um, you know, you guys looked at me like, what are they? And I'm like, <laughs> right. That was really hard. Inside, I was at conflict. I was at you war with myself. Because I, you yeah, of course, I had a thought of what I wanted yeah. it to be. But you remember what I told you guys? I said, it's up to you I ain't giving it to you. Yep. And you all looked at me like, <laughs> okay, aren't you the, aren't you the leader? Aren't you supposed to do this? You're not being a very good leader. Today. Right, right, <laughs> right, right. Yes. But I learned from others that this isn't some epiphany that I had. I watched that went. There's something really cool about being humble, taking a step back and going, do I trust these people I've surrounded myself with to do this thing and do it well? Mm -hmm. And if I don't, then then one, I have to go, I have to go to God and go, are these the right people? If they are, I need to get my heart right. If they aren't, if they're being prideful or selfish and things like mm -hmm. that, then we need to have those conversations and bring that around. Not mm -hmm. cut them out bring them in deeper, right? But I looked at I looked at you, I looked at Susie, I looked at Tesha, I looked at Keena, I went, yeah, let's do this, right? Like And it's and not so like you were you guys. Yeah, and it's not like you weren't participating, well, of but course you not. were certainly not taking the lead on the idea generation and the Oh, the, it's so hard, the, man. I know. It I know. was so hard. But it was really really good. And I think what I we think so. what we came out with at the end was yep. a really good product and uh yep. and, and I do that a lot with the youth leaders yep. now. And, it's good. Um I said that when I first came, if you remember in our interview, I said, I don't want it to be me. I'm working, I, I'm spending this time so that these ministries are stable without me. Mm -hmm. Not because I'm just going to leave, but because I don't want it dependent on me. Reality, who I am, I would love it to be dependent on me because yeah. then I feel, I feel important, right? I feel fulfilled. Mm -hmm. All these, but, but they're not. But they're not healthy aspirations. They're me aspirations. When in reality now, when I look at it and I go, I feel so much more fulfilled the way things are now. Why? Because I've got a team with yeah. me doing this. And reality is my thoughts, expectations, what I wanted has changed. Yeah. And when, I, when I finally submitted to that, mm -hmm. I realized when you guys came forward with these ideas, I'm like... Those are really good. <laughs> Whereas before, if I approached it going, I think this is what it needs to be. To an extent, a lot of what you guys would have said, I probably would have gone, oh, I like this better. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. And so look, and looking again at our kids, right, of going, I want them to be a leadership team. It's going to promote. That's really the biggest thing in my head. What is, if I create a team aspect with my kids, it's going to promote what? It's going to promote leadership but as a team, it's going to promote selflessness. It's going to promote 
peace. It's going to promote patience. It's going to promote allowance for wrongs, right? Right now, that, that's a big thing. Uh, my brother hit me over the head with a ball, <laughs> right? Well, why did you do that? Well, we were playing basketball. Okay, allowance for something to go wrong. Like, you don't need to get mad at him. You're mad at the situation, and that's mm-hmm. valid because no one likes getting hit in the head with a ball. <laughs> But where's the heart? But a lot of times, <laughs> yeah. right. But a lot of times, exactly. And you go back and you go, Oscar, did you mean to hit Harry in the head? No, we were just playing. I'm like, okay. So you guys mm-hmm. talk to each other. You don't, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be present. I'm going to be active. Just mm-hmm. like you were saying. Yeah. Like in all these team things, it's not so I do less. And in fact, in a lot of ways, I'm doing more because mm-hmm. I have to have all my stuff together ready to go on top of make it make room for everything that you guys are wanting to do. Same thing with the kids, right? I'm even more involved. But they are no longer going coming to me, okay, Dad, be the arbitrator of this. Figure it out. <laughs> well, of course, yeah. then when they're 18 and they're out of the house and Dad's no, and Mom's they nowhere no to idea be found, to deal with and Catholic. they get in an argument, what do they do? They react emotionally and they act on it. Mm-hmm. Why? Because there's no one there to solve it for them. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting there going, I don't want that. Mm-hmm. I want my kids at five to go, hey, Oscar hit me in the head with a ball. We're playing basketball probably didn't mean to do it that really hurt and it really frustrated me (laughs) oscar can you please be more careful next time yeah harry i'll try to be more careful now it sounds way different as a four-year-old and a three-year-old speaking (laughs) right and it won't come out like that that you know perfect speech or anything Mm. like that but that's that's what i'm hoping to foster but outside of a team there's no ownership to those things there's no there's no um What's the word? There's no... Uh, accountability. Yeah, accountability. Thank you. That's the word. There's no mm-hmm. accountability of those things. It's just, I'm going to try to do my best. Well, no. Come together. And when you guys fail, help each other. Mm-hmm. And go, hey, seems like you're just trying to do something for yourself. Can we do this as a team? And if they're all walking humbly, they'll receive it. But if there's no team aspect, there is no accountability. There is no ownership to these kids working together to to accomplish something cool. And I think that these households, if if their kids were a team, those kids would go and accomplish something amazing if given the opportunity to go do it. And my hope is my kids, when they get to 8, 10, Mm -hmm. 12, 15, that they grow continually as a team and they go accomplish something cool Mm -hmm. as a team. Not when they're 18 and somehow arrived at adulthood and now you're important and now you can go be a leader. Be a leader at 10. No, it doesn't mean you're probably going to be up front, you know, saying no. much. But can you affect somebody as a 10-year-old? You know, I love it. Um, the uh, the Tops were doing welcome ministry recently. Mm-hmm. And Harry's with them and, and Kevin took them. And he went and greeted people at the door. And I'm like, that. I want that all day. Mm-hmm. Because Harry's going, I'm a piece of this body. I'm a part of this team yep how cool would that be if my kids grow up and realize that and take ownership of it Mm -hmm. and go i'm a part of a team i contribute i am not the whole i am a part but i'm gonna do my part to the best of my ability it's like would this world look a little different (laughs) right and part of part of loving each other as siblings is Mm -hmm. serving one another right Mm -hmm. so that idea of a servant leader in the context of daily house chores, doing this, Mm. doing that. Instead of Harry having to tell Oscar to put his dishes away, Oscar's already grabbed his dishes and grabbed Harry's as out of kindness. Right, without being asked. Because Harry was involved in something else and wasn't paying attention, right? Right, right. And the whole that's my question. How do you foster that, right? right? To what structure are you raising your kids to foster those things beyond just telling them? Because you and I both know, all three of us know, that just telling your kids to be nice, just telling your kids to be loving, just telling your kids to be, to not be selfish, it doesn't work. It doesn't work to simply just say the words and not have any accountability or going, there's action to it, Uh, you know, and like you said, it does. It starts with the husband and the wife, working together as a team. Mm -hmm. Sorry, go ahead. No, 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 no. Yeah. Exactly on that. It's like, I always think of when you talk about those, how do we foster that? I'm like, I've... All the fingers are pointed at me. Yeah. You know, how I love And by God's life. strength, not by your own. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And I think one of the examples I have, I was probably a couple of weeks ago, mm. my son randomly came up to me and said, I love you, Dad. Mm. And I was like, That oh, melts you. That makes melts me you. Like cry right mm-hmm. now. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Why do I deserve this? <laughs> yeah. Why do you, like, yeah. right? You know, but 
and it's I don't mean to say more about me at all, but it's like I tell my wife in front of my kids, mm-hmm. I love her mm-hmm. oh, and I cherish definitely. her. Definitely. Even even you yesterday. Yeah. Even you yesterday. Yeah. You hugged Tesha and he said, Boys, how do you know I love Tesha? Yeah. Well, yep. you didn't say Tesha. You said mom. Mom. Yep. And they come out and they're, oh, they're thinking they're grinding away in their minds. How? How? And then <laughs> I'm off to the side going, hug. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're hugging mom. Uh-huh, yeah. You yeah. know? Right. Like, Yep. Showing like teaching and then ew you kiss <laughs> mom right you do things for it. yeah yeah I'm glad you brought that up yeah it's super important to me that my boys know that I love my wife beyond yeah. belief that we will argue we will have disagreements and at the end of the day in the midst of that we will love each other mm-hmm. no matter what yeah. um, and you're right it starts there and then from there fosters these opportunities of you know I, I look at Heron and go. You aren't here to tell Oscar what to do. Do it. Mm-hmm. Whatever you're saying to Oscar to go do, whatever you're telling Leo, you know, you know, talk to mom nice. Do it. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the things I talk to Harry about is every moment of your life, you're going to have a choice <laughs> to be a good leader <laughs> or a bad leader. Because the reality is, and that's what I was telling you before, youth, you are leaders. <laughs> no, I'm not. People are watching you. Yep. Older, younger, and your actions yep. will always influence the people around you. They will influence their perceptions of you. Mm-hmm. They will influence what they're going to do in their life. It might embolden them to do something wrong or right. Um, it could make them shy away from doing something wrong or right based on what you do no matter what. And this is something that clicked in me when I finally got um, a little bit into high school, but for sure when I got into college, right? Mm-hmm. And I almost got kicked out of Crown being dumb. And I realized it finally clicked. I know, thick head, <laughs> thick head hearing. I'm, I'm keeping my mouth shut over here. <laughs> it finally clicked. My actions, no matter what, mm-hmm. is leading somebody. I don't always know who, mm-hmm. but it is affecting somebody. Are you going to be a good leader today? That is going to that is going to encourage somebody. That is going to lift them up. That is going to show them a better way. Or are you going to be a bad leader? So I look at Harry a lot of times now and I go, mm-hmm. what choice are you going to make? And, it, and immediately he goes, I want to be a good leader. I'm like, does a good leader do that? No. <laughs> right? <laughs> Isn't it funny how internally they, they, know, they, know, it. Oh, oh, they know it? Oh, man. Yeah. Know it. That just blows my mind. But, and it gets back to integrity, it's right? So, so so much of what our kids see is, is how we are when basically nobody else is looking mm-hmm. except for our families, right? Yeah. So that idea of... of Having the integrity to do the right thing mm-hmm. when you don't have to. Yeah. yeah. You really don't have to. Yeah. But the right thing needs to be done. Yeah. And so if you can model that that I guess intestinal fortitude to mm-hmm. say, Yeah, I'd love to skate out of this thing the easy way, but I'm yeah. not going to. I'm gonna do the right thing. Totally. Um, super important for them to, to learn. And then they're gonna take that to their school, to, yeah. to their teams, yeah. you know. And that's when that element of of investment into them and their personhood and their character matters to the their social sphere, Definitely. those that are around them, and that's where you end up with leaders like Spencer and the in the youth that's uh, right. that other kids are watching. Our them. producer, yeah, we can get a hand from our producer. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> so I know that other younger students are watching him, mm-hmm. and they they are watching and, and uh, paying attention when he's doing the right thing. Yeah, and it's not just about him; it's not just about his obedience to no. to what God is calling him to do. It's setting the tone for everybody coming behind them. And the reality, typically, a lot of times I have found the people you have impacted the most, you never knew. Mm -hmm. You never knew you impacted them. Right. You look a lot of times if, yeah, and it's like, really? Mm -hmm. That? That is what impacted you? Not what I said here all these different times. That impacted, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, Yeah. Such a cool, such a cool subject. I don't know. You guys have any other yeah, thoughts? Yeah, I've got one more, and mm-hmm. I know we, we haven't touched on it completely yet. But the word failure mm. in regards to leadership, mm. not only the failure it, itself, yeah, mm-hmm. but then how do you teach how to take failure? Right. Do you teach that failure is a means of growth, an opportunity? Right. How do you model that? And I don't have all the answers because I'm I'm young in it still, you know. Yeah. I, but how do we get our kids to change their mind and heart on it? Because I guarantee yeah. you, when you get into school, when you get into work, failure is 
associated with bad. Yeah. Well, and your self worth a lot of times is wrapped exactly. up into in, into success or failure. I know that for myself. I struggle with that to yep. this day yep. at different times. Of this didn't go well, and somehow that devalues me, mm-hmm. right? Um, and is there a healthy motivation behind doing something good, or is it so that I feel good? You well, know? And, and how do we how do we effectively forgive ourselves? Mm-hmm come into agreement if we repented, come to agreement yeah. with what God says about that mm-hmm. and then offload that shame. Yeah. Get rid of it, right? So yeah. you're not packing that baggage yeah. uh, no matter no matter even if it's a you know small yeah. thing that Harry did at the age of four and a half. I mean right. really he shouldn't have to think about that. Right. Well and, and that's an the issue. thing, um, to your point, if your kids see failure in a healthy light, mm-hmm. then as again back to this subject, as a team, they are they are gonna eat more easily make allowance for each other's failures because they know themselves have failed, right? They've come to grips with that and go, it doesn't feel good. And if they're feeling that, I don't want them to feel Mm -hmm. that, right? That's where love, gentleness comes in. And then help, you know, help each other out of that, that dip. Um, And to your point too, whoops, um, right? What is failure? Just because you didn't reach the goal you put to yourself, is that failure? Mm -hmm. Or did you learn? You know, I I talk to my boys a lot of times of, um, I don't think I don't think that went bad. Did you learn from it? Yeah, I learned from it. I'm like success. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's your perspective. Yeah, it's one of the things that that uh, I think I think Reese is coming along really well and and um, and understanding some of that. There was a, a period of time not too long ago where if he wasn't getting hundred percent on all of his yeah. assignments yes. and his yes. tests and things, he thought he yeah, was, you he was failing. Way. Right, yeah. so. Yeah. Dude, you got a ninety-five percent. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's not really a failure. Good. Yeah, right. So, but it's it it's calibrating and understanding and what failure. success is and what mm-hmm. failure is. And I, and I I don't want to, you know, strip away that desire to be really really excellent in everything yeah. that we do. Yeah. But the, the truth is, we're not perfect human beings. We can't be excellent in everything totally. we do, especially yeah. the first time out. And so, at what point does that excellence turn into something that's unhealthy? That's right. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's. Uh, you know, it's it's a super important thing is to understand not only how to navigate failure, but the value of failure. And mm-hmm. I, I agree that that's Huge a super, um, you know, it's all about how we respond to it, how we mm-hmm. use that to, to fuel our, our next steps. Yeah. And again, I'll say again, bottom line, it starts with us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. I find myself, you know, I purposely come when, when I screw up, because I tell you, it's it's often. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Amen, bro. I'm fallible, just like both mm-hmm. of you. Yeah. But I force myself to come and apologize mm. in front of my kids. Yeah. To allow them to see I made a big mistake. Yep. And I need to apologize because I was in I was in the wrong. I made it mm-hmm. I failed. Mm-hmm. And I wanna I wanna show you the right way yeah. to go about it. Yep. So Well and as we said at the beginning, this is uh, one great experiment that has <laughs> huge implications mm-hmm. and responsibility and weight to it that um, that yeah, we wanna do it well. My hope is as we discuss these things, people that listen and watch that they um, they, they themselves would just be spurred on to be thinking about what they do and why they do it, right? That's, that's my biggest thing when I talk to parents is why do you do what you do? Do you have a goal in mind? Or are you just trying to, like, they raise them so they don't kill people, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, that's to me, that's like absolute bottom line, you know? Well, they don't rob banks. Okay, good. What, what's a loftier goal that we can set ourselves, you know, set for ourselves that, that's going to raise raise individuals, adults, leaders mm-hmm. that go in and make a difference in this world. Because honestly, that's that's what I want to see. That's what I want to be a part of. Um, and as as followers of God, right, that, that they would make a difference for the kingdom, right, that God would be glorified through it all. And, um, and I think by exercising, teaching your kids how to be a leader in their own respect, in mm-hmm. their own right, because everybody's going to be a different leader. 100%. You're, you are way different mm-hmm. than I am. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we're brothers. Yeah, but we're leaders in our own right. And only a year and a half, two years apart. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And so, how how do we get them to learn about their mm-hmm. own leadership style? Yeah. And then, how does that leadership style fit in what God's totally. will for their life is? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because I think when they start to dig into who God created them to be, mm-hmm. they will naturally find their lane where God desires them yeah. to be. Totally. Well, I appreciate you guys joining me today. It was a good discussion. Uh, yeah, important, important topics. Um, we do hope to do this subject again as a part two and have a few different voices uh, included, those that are on the other side of this. Uh, like I said, we're on the early side. This, 
we have a lot of ignorance to to parent. We we haven't parented teenagers. Mm-hmm. Shoot, we haven't parent, parented elementary kids yet, yeah, right? It's yeah. it's a new, a, you know, Harry is going to be starting, you know, kindergarten soon. It's a whole new world, mm-hmm. you know. I, I thought I had more time, man. Slow down. Uh, uh, capture every guys, moment. Yeah, right? but you guys are doing it right, and it's, right? he's he's ready. And and that's so. The one thing I I will say, mm-hmm. uh, and and we both can say this, you know, I, I kind of hope that you end up with a. A daughter. Wouldn't that be now, great? Now I know that you guys are good with either way, and mm-hmm. it's it's you know in some ways it'd be easier to have. We joke son, about yeah. having twin yeah. daughters. Yeah, so. there you go. So um, there is a different dynamic, mm-hmm. and uh, I would just say, uh, if you end up your fifth one is a, a girl, uh, I will be constantly in prayer for her future boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I won't even have to do anything. No, nope. nope. boyfriend yeah, comes five, over, and I'll just five, sick man. the yeah. sons on them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, take care of them, boys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Indeed, which is which is good. Yeah. So yeah, thanks uh, thanks for joining me. Episode two of Appreciate season two, it. onward and upward, uh, and that's what we want to live. We want to continue to move onward and upward mm-hmm. in our relationship with Christ, taking a step forward. Life is going to be hard. It's always going to knock you down. We don't. That that's not a an if. It's a when, and we want to continue to move forward in our in our walk with God and continue to grow in relationship with others and Him. Right, and so that's why we exist. That's why we do what we do. Um, that's why we talk about what we talk about and uh, look forward to the next time that uh, Ben you get to join me yeah maybe down the road Roland you get to join hey, us yeah. again on this and uh, thank you thank you all for for listening mm-hmm. um, that are and and uh, we'll catch you all next time